Hey, Bonnie, thank you so much. That is the Christmas story in a nutshell. Our Advent wreath is moving right along, as they say. We lit the joy candle the first last week, the hope candle. Uh, let me check that, check that. Hope, peace, and today is joy. See, I got so much joy just spilling over. <laughs> But the joy candle is the pink one today, so we're excited about that. Uh, we will light the love candle next Sunday there in the front, and the Christ candle in the center for our Christmas Eve service. What a blessing that will be. We hope and pray. Uh, we know that a lot of families have events going on, things going on, and, and we uh, we give you a pass on that for Christmas Eve. But if at all possible, if you can squeeze in that hour. To, to be here with us from 7 to 8 o'clock. We just love to have you. It's, it's so important for our church family to get together for the things that are important. It's important to spend time together. We'd love to have you come out for that Christmas Eve, 7 o'clock. That's a Tuesday night. This year, Christmas is on a Wednesday. Um, what a blessed, blessed time that will be. Joy! Joy, joy, joy. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. That's the crux of the matter of the scripture that Bonnie read for us there from Luke chapter 2 today. What I've got to say for you this morning will be brief with, with everything that's been going on. I don't want to keep you too long. But I was reading some uh, some supplemental reading as I am off apt to do. Uh, and I've got this big book on my shelf that I was telling Kathy that it's probably been on my shelf. It's probably this fast. It's, a, uh, it's even bigger than the War and Peace. It's a book by Alfred Edersheim. Has anyone ever heard of that name, Alfred, Alfred Edersheim? It's a, he's a prominent author of the first part of the century. He wrote a book called The Life and Times of Jesus the Messiah. Now, I was reading just a little bit about our Lord in Dr. Edersheim's book, and I came across some interesting aspects we all know about, we've had our little shepherds singing to us this morning, we've had some jingle bells, and, and we've, we've heard Silent Night and all of that, but we know what the shepherds did. And I will tread carefully here, trying not to mess anything up. But it's very important. Most people don't know, according to Edersheim, what, what he had written in his book, said that when the, Lord, the angels appeared to those shepherds in the field at, at night, those were not ordinary shepherds, and those were not ordinary sheep. Now, they weren't alien sheep, or extraterrestrial sheep, or shepherds, or anything like that. But that particular group of shepherds, he says now, and other scholars that are checking seem to agree, were... That was the preparation ground for the sacrificial lambs that would be sacrificed and slaughtered for the temple. So here you've got these sheep that are being cared for there on property near the temple. You've got sheep that are being cared for, sheep that are in their last days of living probably. Sheep that prepared for a certain thing in life, and that is to die as a sacrifice. And then you've got the shepherds, who because of the nature of their trade, the nature of their business, they're not able to keep the temple laws. They weren't able to, to be in service and give all of the, the proper alms that the Jewish law and customs bid them to do. So they were kind of social outcasts. So picture this, mind you, that these, the angel appears to these shepherds watching these sheep. He, they appear to outcast shepherds and to condemned sheep. What a great God we serve. Amen. He includes all. Even the condemned. Even those that are outcasts. I'm not asking for a show of hands or anything like that. But how many of you during your, your, your lifetimes... Some more brief or longer than others. Have you felt like you didn't fit in? Or you didn't belong? Or that you weren't exactly where you needed to be? Something to that effect. I'm sure at some point we've all felt that way, that we didn't just quite fit in. Now most of you know this past week, well, just this past Sunday, 
Our, district, our dear sister, Jewel Spikesma, was sitting with us in one of those uh, back few rows uh, for the very last time. Now, last Sunday, we didn't know that. We didn't know that. But God had an appointment for her. God had an appointment for us. Good to have Wayne with us this morning. And we will memorialize our dear sister at the, the Thorn, Thorn Creek Reformed Church there in South Holland this Tuesday, beginning at 9 o'clock uh, for a wait from 9 to 11. And the service will be at 11 o'clock at that Thorn Creek Church. So if you're able to make it out there to, to pay your respects, uh, I know the family would appreciate it. But Jewel just meant, meant the world to me. I know that she meant the world to you. Uh, oh, what a special lady. What a special lady. What a special relationship you had with her as we bonded. And I remember that's one of the first things. And Alice uh, had said this on the church Facebook page. She walked into our church and said she was looking for a church. And Alice or some of the other folks said, uh, well, you found us. You found us. And I didn't catch it didn't important to belong, to be a part of something, something bigger than us. And she certainly was that. We just praise God for her influence, for her influence in all of our lives. But those shepherds, as the angels appeared to them, the angels said, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Of I don't know about you. I'm ready to recover if angels appear to me in the middle of the night someplace out in the open. I mean, it's just duck and cover. But the angels said, don't be afraid. God is in what we're doing. God is in our announcement. And He wants to include you. So if you've ever been in a circumstance where you were looking for something, if you're looking for a church, if you're looking for peace in your life, if you're looking for answers, God wants you to know today that as He included those shepherds and included those condemned sheep, that He wants to include you today. That is the message of Christmas, that you are important to Jesus. Our theme this entire month has been getting ready for Jesus. Let's get ready for Jesus. Some of you have been reading in the book of Luke a chapter each day. And as Bonnie read earlier, if you've been reading along a chapter a day, you should be reading chapter 15 today. Try to catch up. Read the whole book of Luke if you have the opportunity. What a blessing it is. It's been for me to reread it. From our Lord's birth where we are now through several of the miracles that he's performed. People are important to Jesus. And as we're in this Christmas season, I mean, we can all get caught up in the, the hubbub and the rush and, and you know, going to and fro, but people are important to Jesus. They're important back then and they're important now. And so things that are important to Jesus should be important to us. To us. They should be important to me. They should be important to you. And people are important to Jesus. And we, we, we need to convey that love. We need to convey that spirit. That he's, he's the reason for this season. He's the reason that we're here today. We love the kids. We love Will and the group singing for us. They did a wonderful job. But without Jesus, there's no reason to gather here today. There's no reason to sing the songs, the carols, to give gifts. There's no reason without Jesus. There is no hope. There is no peace. There is no joy without Jesus. So as we are entrenched in this Advent journey, let's remember once again the reason for the season. And that's Jesus. He came to those shepherds. They were outcasts. They were looking for answers. Those sheep were condemned to die. He appeared to all of them. He'll appear to you today. So whatever your circumstances, wherever you're at, sometimes we may feel like we have to look up just to see Bob. God is there. He knows. He understands. And He wants to meet you at the point of that meeting. Do you know Him today? Is He your Lord? Is He your Savior? If not, what better day to choose Him? We've lit the joy candle today. There is true joy 
in knowing Jesus as your personal Savior. But to trust God, you just have to admit that you're a sinner to Him. You don't have to tell this pastor anything. God knows your heart, He knows your life already. He loves you. He wants to forgive you your sins, but you've got to ask Him. You've got to ask Him. Jesus said to that thief on the cross, after the man that said, he, he, He's done nothing. We've sinned. We've sinned, as He said to the other thief. He says, We've sinned and come short of, of His glory. Jesus turned and said, This day you'll be with me in paradise. You realize the importance of the cross. Very, very important. The importance of repentance. So the true Christmas message today, we can declare to the world that the Good Shepherd cares for all people and wants to give them peace. Christ came on that first Christmas for this great world, and that was to die on the cross for us. Do you know Him today? Do you know Him today? Is He your Lord? Is He your Savior today? If not, see me after service. I'll take the Bible, I'll show you page by page, verse by verse. You don't have to believe a thing I say, but I'll show you what God says. And when God says it, it's important. And He records it in His Word. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you folks. Thank you so much for being here today. We're going to quickly move into our prayer time.